Hello Legends and welcome to Blunt Force Healing episode 288. Yes, I'm a little bit more, uh, I would say, dynamic and try to move a little bit, but not too much because I can see that the, the light is not perfect and the camera is losing focus, so maybe that's the best, uh, that's not the best uh, idea to be uh, too ecstatic about recording, but I am. It's not too late, it's not too early to record it, it's uh, about 19.44, so 7.44 p.m., so a lovely time to start this recording and summarize a bit what happened so far. So for those of you that are new to the channel or new to the project itself, because it's kind of project on my side, this thing started from a first blog post and episode of a podcast back in September 19, 2022. So exactly 288 days from that date. And as you could hear, 288 episode is the one that I'm recording and you're watching, which means that every single day the blog post has been written and then the episode of a podcast has been recorded. In the beginning it was very cringe and it still is to some extent but it used to be really really cringe but after many years of not doing anything consistently I decided to you know try again and it's very hard, especially for people that, um, you know, mark themselves as procrastinators or are marked or kind of stigmatized by the community or the people around them as procrastinators, have difficulty of doing things, you know, as a habit or as a routine, it seems. But there are very interesting research in those areas, uh, starting from psychology through other areas, that procrastination it is not necessarily being inconsistent, but is not being consistent because the thing that we are trying to be consistent in is something that we don't like or we don't enjoy doing. So there are obviously some people that are maybe less sensitive to getting into it and doing things that they don't really enjoy. They just think it's work, I will do it anyway, even though I don't like it. And then there are people that are more, uh, as I said, sensitive to that fact that they just don't enjoy doing something, to, so they don't want to do that. And even if you force them or they force themselves, they can't be consistent because they don't enjoy it and this is how they, how they are. So it's not like they have some sickness or condition psychologically, but they just don't want to do that. And there are different things that they like. And if you see them, focused on those things, you will see that they not only do it consistently, easily, but with excitement and with real dedication. So when I've learned that, I kind of understood that, you know, why so many people suffer being put into the same drawer of procrastination. And I was too. I've put myself in there many times. I also seen uh, or heard about the word acrasia, which is slightly different from procrastination. It's less about delaying stuff and doing other things and distracting yourself with uh, things that are easier to do. But acrasia is more serious on that side that we know that we need to do something to progress ourselves or to make our life and our 
let's say, family better, but we still choose to not do it. And obviously feel the whatever time we could spend on those valuable tasks with something else. That something else might be still valuable, but not valuable enough towards our goals, but rather towards others' goals, which is very often uh, the case because, you know, most of us, at least people that work for someone, work for someone's success. And I myself am to blame, I'm still in a corporate sphere, but uh, I do things for, you know, somebody owning a company that while I, while I try to align, and I'm, I actually align with many values that they specify in the mission statement and uh, a lot of strategy uh, elements, you know, there are things that I've been volunteered into in, you know, across my career rather than I chose them to be it. I was always a good shapeshifter in terms of adjusting myself, learning quickly uh, new things. And that's great because I was developing myself uh, a lot. I was pretty good and I am pretty good with people in general, but I'm not a social type good of person or a person that is actually, you know, good in manipulating people. No, not, I'm not me. I don't mean that. I mean that even though I deal with people that might be against me or against each other, I find a way to convince them, not manipulate them, but convince them that we have mutual benefit in working together or they have in working together, let's say two different teams that have some animosity against them. And I find myself a good glue in those situations. They might hate me, they might not like me, but still they will do some things because what I ask makes sense. And if I can, I do a lot of that stuff that otherwise somebody would ask them. I try to do them myself. So they see that there is a element of me being involved and trying to sort as much as I can myself and then I only need their expertise where I lack it. So, uh, but still, I, w I was always a reactive person uh, to those things. But once I heard that uh, explanation about the procrastination that I just mentioned at the beginning, I started digging a little bit into my past and even present. I can spend hours on things that, for example, my wife would think that they are useless, they are not important, they don't bring anything to, let's say, the next step in our life or the goals. But if you look from the different angle, I must enjoy them so much because my focus goes into them and I spend consistently time with them. It's not like I watch Netflix or consume, you know, some entertainment content. There's nothing bad about entertainment, but as long as it's done in balance, but there is a reason why it's called entertainment. It's to kind of let us entertain a bit. The problem is that we most of the time entertain ourselves way over what we should and other tasks are basically neglected. And so I found myself in, in many cases, especially if it comes to the technicalities or researching and troubleshooting, I can spend days on that. Even though I know the risk or that the, the result might be, you know, maybe not the failure, but I might be un unsuccessful in reaching the the goal of troubleshooting, but the fact of the process 
and me learning a lot of stuff along the way is worth it in my head and I can focus on that I can shut myself to the you know external distractions even and work on those things so that completely eliminates or rejects the idea of procrastination being something considered bad uh, from this perspective. The only thing that so-called procrastinators are missing is basically rerouting their interest and or rooting their interest to the point where it is beneficial for them to complete the tasks that are closer to their goals and I think that's that's the whole point of calibrating myself and if you're like me or many other people that have difficulty in finding their own ways in being more efficient more productive to be more productive so I think that's the way and also that aligns with a very important distinction for me uh, you know between being busy and being productive there are two different things some people mix them together and they think that if they do a lot of stuff during the day and they can list them all that means that they are productive no they are usually busy so they do a lot of stuff but just a small fraction of those things that they've done if you look closer is actually towards their objectives and goals in life or in their role but they always have that list or you know a big bunch of things to say so people think they are oh yeah you are busy so you do a lot of stuff yes they do but these things are not productive and the key is to shift yourself and your mindset between things that make you busy and things that make you productive so focusing on that small percentage of things that are actually driving you towards the goal and learning how to filter distractions and things that will not or will just make you busy and consume your time all right i'll talk too much about this i guess uh, i uh, diverted a little bit but this was the source and origin of me reattempting again to build some project to learn uh, to be a more productive person or more consistent because it's hard to talk about productivity if you can't find some core principle or core uh, habit or routine and this is what I was searching I've had a little small kind of uh, routine that every day I was learning a little bit of language through Duolingo app some of you might know it and it was mostly Spanish language and I've done it for more than two years already so that was something that I was doing consistently and it paid back already because I understand the, a lot of concepts in Spanish I can say a lot of things in Spanish uh, albeit I'm not fluent at all and still sh on the shy side of saying things in Spanish but I can easily write a lot of stuff and read Spanish text and get most of the context quite easily even when I don't necessarily know the you know the phrases or specific words I can deduct what the text is about and know the construction already of those sentences how they are created or how Spanish language works in a basic form so those two years if somebody says to you that you can't learn a language from the app yes you can of course you need to practice later on or in the middle or in parallel but yes apps are more than enough to teach you basics and then you just need native speaker or speaker 
actually is at least a little bit more fluent than you so you can try to converse and listen to Spanish stuff like the music or watch the movies and that will definitely help you out and but I didn't have any core habit except for this one so on that September 19 I wrote my first blog post from that 288 days that we are reaching now and also I recorded it in audio form and as I said it was cringe it was a couple of sentences I don't even know if it was 100 words probably not I don't even know if it was 50 so but I decided to be simple and I was very short post short recording in audio version and I kept going like that expanding a little changing it so it became more and more uh, extensive uh, longer posts I started adding pictures started talking more about the other habits and started using other apps as well because I saw that Duolingo was able to keep me going for those two years so I looked into other areas and at the moment you can see in the blog post at the very end of each day's journal because I call that blog journal because I'm basically journaling about every day you can see my current streak a stage where I am with each app and you have a span of all possible uh, you know time spans so Duolingo is currently I believe at 759 or something like that days then I use a Mimo app which is very similar to Duolingo but about the programming and the coding and learning web development I'm about 170 something days and before I believe there so you can see it's a huge difference and then I have another app which is Duolingo based also is Duolingo math which gives you kind of reminder or refresher of many concepts in maths especially useful maths in life like you know assess assessing you know estimating deducting and all that stuff like the percentage uh, percentages in in pricing so it's a very kind of life focused maths and i am at the moment like you know 111 days in so again not as huge discrepancy or distance between Mimo and Duolingo Math but significant enough of about two months difference that I started later on and the most recent that I kind of restarted because I used to do that very very long time ago probably 20 years ago maybe 15 years ago is uh, the app called Elevate it's one of those brain training apps but it's actually very cool and I used to do that very often then stopped for many many years and I restarted recently so today marks a second week exactly 14 days of doing Elevate so we can see I have four apps that I use as satellite habits not the core habits and core habit or core routine is writing the blog and recording the podcast and because the podcast was basically me reading every day whatever I wrote in the blog it was a bit mechanical not as genuine of, as writing the podcast it was just basically a, like an audiobook or even worse on day 200 um, one of the things that kind of pushed me to use whatever I was thinking for a long time to change the format of the podcast to be more loose and more conversational a friend of mine Carlos decided like kind of said that he listened to uh, to that a bit and read the blogs blog posts and he saw that blog posts are, are cool you can you can feel what I write that I don't it genuinely but then the podcast is very mechanical and robotic so he proposed that maybe I should do it in, a, in, in a, the other way like normal conversational more loose format and that was something that I was thinking for probably months before and 
struggling in between, but didn't have enough feedback from people to to really see if this is the way. Uh, and I tested that. So here we are. This is the conversational version since day 200, so we are 288, which means 88 days. It's a loose and conversational format where I can dive into what happened during the day, what was maybe yesterday, if it was worth mentioning, what might happen in the next couple of days, as well as my own thoughts uh, and sometimes things related to events that are happening in the area or in general in the world. So yeah, it's more of a journaling and but journaling around my life. And as a side effect, I talk about other things that might give value to people to see that I'm just a single uh, person struggling with, well, I use the wrong word because I'm not single, I'm married, but I'm just a, a, a unit of that whole global multi-billion population that struggles the same way as other people do on different stages. So you might as well hear me out and this is what you're doing if you're listening to it. You're spending a lot of your time. It's currently 20, almost 22 minutes that you've spent if you got that far. And I really appreciate it because you could spend that 22 minutes in a probably much more entertaining way than just listening to me. So I really thank you very much for, for getting so far and listening to that episode. And I hope that you'll come back tomorrow and the day after and so on. I really recommend to going to read the blog post because blog posts are different. I usually write them after I record uh, well, for for some time, because previously I usually wrote the blog post and then I was commenting on what I wrote, but I switched recently uh, the, the format completely. So I first record, upload it to YouTube and Spotify, and after that, at some stage, I start writing the blog post, which is usually quite different than what I say in the podcast. So they complement each other. There might be overlapping things that I'll be commenting on and writing, but they are different. And I think that's better because while some people might prefer watching video and listening, the others might prefer reading, but there will be people that want to do both. And that would be great if such people exist and want to spend that time on consuming my whole project as a blog post and the podcast and hopefully get some value out of it and provide feedback to me. So I appreciate anyone reaching out to me. My social uh, accounts are on top of every post. So you can see the YouTube channel, Instagram, TikTok, uh, I believe Facebook and Twitter as well. So you can reach me on any of those platforms. Uh, I'll be happy to get into that conversation with you uh, at any time you want. So I'm just a simple man that uh, records life, daily life, to have that record of being here on this planet in this beautiful you know universe and at some stage in life I'll probably come back to many of those episodes and it will be cringe to see but also I feel like I might even you know shed a tear uh, later on in life if I'm lucky to survive next couple of decades and see how it went and I hope to be in a much better place and that will be just the proof uh, the evidence of my life not being super cool back in the days but maybe it will be super cool you know 
in the future. So I don't want to drag you for too long. It's 25 minutes and Spotify only allows me 30 minutes. So just to quickly summarize what happened today. So we woke up early because Julian started this week um, surfing summer camp. So it's a five day every five uh, every day from Monday today to Friday they do about two and a half hours of lessons kind of warm-up and games and surfing in Tulan uh, in Pundoran so he already thoroughly enjoyed the first day and already kind of got a friend or kind of colleague there where they got common topics like playing games playing soccer and I'm really happy that he enjoyed that first day because it was terrible in terms of weather like temperatures dropped it was so windy I was ripping heads uh, of people of course I'm joking but it was very windy the ocean was very rough and choppy waves were sometimes bigger than than Julian himself and there was not only rain constantly kind of showing or kind of the, we, we had spells coming in and, and out but also they got pelted by uh, you know the hail as well so but they survived that's that's about it we all are kids at some stage where we need to do something on our own well obviously they were uh, cared by uh, two instructors but we weren't there like me, myself and, and uh, Ella, we went to Bundaran to get some coffee and did the breakfast and then walked along the beach. So we were in the nearby area, but we weren't exactly in the spot where he was training. So he had to survive it. And we were a little bit uncomfortable, but he enjoyed it. He got a colleague. He didn't get sick yet, as far as I know. He wasn't cold and he's looking uh, forward to the next stage tomorrow in the next four days and then after that the following week will be another summer camp which he will be joining but this time it will be a soccer so outside of that there was not much uh, today to share with you it was still mostly focused on work so uh, I think I already dragged for too long it's almost 28 minutes so let me wrap up, stay tuned for tomorrow and I hope you uh, join me uh, on the podcast and in the blog this Tuesday. So stay safe, have a great day or afternoon or evening, wherever you are in terms of time zone.